Well, good morning and welcome to Day Spring Ministries, 9.30 a.m. Sunday morning worship service. We are so glad to have you join us on this morning. Let's give the Lord a hand praise on this morning. As they say, waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. We realize that he did not have to do it, but you know what? He did. Yeah, and he chose you and me. And we woke up this morning and we have youth, youth and activity of each and every one of our days. God is a good God. Yes, he is. We would uh, like to thank all of our online viewers and supporters that support us week in and week out. We praise God for you and we thank God for you. And we do not take you for granted. We love you with the love of the Lord. And continue to follow us and listen to the word of God presented by our very own Pastor Bill Pennant. It will continue to bless you. And remember, please pray for your pastor. Pray, pray for Pastor Bill Pennant. He comes week in and week out with the word of God. And it blesses us. And we thank God for the man of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. On this morning, I'm going to open our scripture with Psalm 67. Amen. You may want to follow me in on your phones or in your word if you have it. That's Psalm 67. And it reads, God be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on the earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. O oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Amen. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen. We thank you for making Day Spring Ministries your place of worship on this morning. Please come back and worship with us. Now we're going to open with the a uh, song of praise. Join us in praise and worship. If you will, please stand to your feet. Amen. 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 I believe the last couple of verses says, and the people shall praise thee, and all the ends of the earth shall praise thee. Yeah. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give God a hand praise.
get on your knees or maybe walk around the room and just say, thank you, Jesus. But when you can walk around the room and say, thank you, Jesus, out of a heart of sincerity, I believe God hears what you're saying from the yeah. place where you're speaking from. Yes. And I'm not talking about out of your mouth, but I'm talking about out of your soul. And when we give God praise and we're saying, thank you, Jesus, for the things that he's done, yes. the things that he's going to do, doors that he has opened. Yes. You know, when, when I first got saved, I heard it said that he can keep you from danger, seen yes. and unseen. Yes. And situations happen in our lives that we don't know anything about, but God is keeping us. He's blocking the enemy. And so when we can just give God praise out of the, out of the sincerity and the purity of our hearts, I believe God honors that. Amen, somebody. I'm not just talking, I mean it. You know what I mean? There are times in my life, you know, I, I like old school music, but there's times in my life I have to shut it down. There's times in my life where I have to get on my knees and just walk around the house and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Go for a walk around the block and give God praise because I thank him. There's so many things he has done to prove himself to me. The old song says he keeps proving himself to me. And so we need to learn to give God praise. I'm not saying that you don't do it, but we need to do it on a regular basis and make it a habit. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. Yeah. 
say just what the Lord says. Amen. And we will give you all the praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the house. Amen. You know, the Lord has been dealing with me for about a month or two about this particular message. And uh, when I become, come before people, God, I like to know who I'm addressing. So I have a question, is anyone in the house saved this morning? Yes! Glory! Anyone in the house saved this morning? Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's something that we all have in common. Mm -hmm. You know, being saved is a wonderful thing. It's truly a blessing. And on this morning, I'm going to talk about something that we can all relate to. Relationships. We all have relationships. Mm -hmm. wow. Whether we want them or not, we have them. We have relationships with our jobs. We have relationships with our children, our friends, our friends. We have relationships that we don't even ask for. Because we have haters. Amen. That's another relationship. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And there's a multitude of relationships, and we don't have the time to talk about all those various relationships. Not to say that they're not important. I'm not saying that. But I know the Lord gave me a word on something that's truly important. Mm -hmm. And he, 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 he spoke with me, he ministered to me, and he told me, he says, you can talk about all those relationships. Mm -hmm. You really could, because you have so many of those different relationships. But he said, now, nah, I would rather you talk about the relationship. Come on now. The ultimate relationship. Yes. The most important relationship that you can have. Yes. And that relationship is with the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I love my children. I truly do. I have two of them. I son and guru. I love my kids. I love my mother. Yes. My brother. I love my friends, my family, my church family. Hmm. Jesus. Nothing like the brother too. <laughs> Y'all are second fiddle to the Lord. Right. I'm just going to keep it real. I love him more than I love him. Yes. Glory to God. Because I wouldn't be standing here before you if it wasn't for him. Amen. 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 Now, I asked you guys a question. You said you were saved. Uh-huh. And so, let's go to the origin of this relationship that you began to have with the Lord. Can we do that? Can we go to the beginning? Okay. You said your stage. So let's go to the scriptures. Let's go to Romans 10 and 9. Mm -hmm. Romans 10 and 9. Hey, man. Romans 10 and 9. We're going to go to the beginning. Can you get this? Amen. 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 I'm going to read for you. Then if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. All right. I, I know you've heard that scripture before. Yes. But I'm going to talk about it a little different today. We hear that scripture when we, when we get saved, when we confess in our mouth, when we believe in our heart. Mm -hmm. But something that's happened when this took place. This was the beginning of your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. This was the beginning. That confession out of your mouth and then what you believe in your heart. Now keep in mind, this particular relationship is like no other relationship. God is not like man. The scriptures say, John 4 and 24, God is a spirit. They that worship him mm -hmm. shall worship him in spirit and in truth. And in truth. Yeah. 
So that makes this a spiritual relationship. You see, all those other relationships I'm talking about, we can see those people. We can call those people. We can text those people. We may not want to call those people. We may not want to text those people. We may not want to communicate at times with those people. But we have the ability. Mm -hmm. And so, unfortunately, because we see these people, these people are in our lives, we have a tendency to focus on those relationships. We have a tendency to allow those relationships to influence our daily routine. We allow those relationships sometimes to get the best of us and change our emotions. That's what we do. Not knowing that those relationships should not shape or influence you. It's okay to have them, but there's only one relationship that should influence you and shape you, and that's your relationship with God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So, let's get caught up. Pastor says all the time, it's so easy to get caught up. That's so true. Every once in a while, we need a reminder of who we are and whose we are. We belong to God. Now think about this. And those other relationships, a lot of times, those relationships are predicated on the conversation, mm -hmm. maybe how you slept that night, or if you did sleep, <laughs> did you eat? Did you get enough? Right. Did you get enough sleep? A lot of times that will predicate how that relationship goes. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but that's the truth all by itself. Yeah. But the relationship that you have with God. He says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. So this particular relationship, we're not going to behave or we're not going to allow our actions to be predicated on what we see. Instead of what we see, we're now transitioning over to a spiritual relationship, which means now I need to believe prior to seeing. The other relationships, we see, then we believe. We see how they act. We see how they communicate. We see how they treat us, and then we treat them a certain way. Amen? But this relationship with God, because I know who he is. Because I know. Yes. Yes, yes. I don't have to wait on what he does for me to give him praise. That's right. Amen. See, wow. you already missed that. Lord, I said it again. See, I don't have to wait on him to do something to give him praise. Lord. Give him praise. Yes, yes. I'm giving him praise because of who he is. Yes. Lord, God. Not what he's done. So when the Lord was dealing with me, and he said, you know, there's so many things that are involved in this relationship with God. So many things. But he says, I only want you to break this down in three different aspects. Come on, break it down. Hallelujah. And the first thing he told me was in this relationship, think about it. All those other relationships I mentioned, there's something that's common in all those relationships. Mm -hmm. You know what that common denominator is? You know those people. Mm -hmm. Whether you want to or not, you know them. So God says, get to know me. Yes. He said, read my word. Yes. Go ahead. Thank okay. you. Go ahead. Timothy said it best. He said, study to show us how to prove unto God. A work we need and not a shame. Write it in the word of truth. Help us, God. Hallelujah. In a relationship, if you don't know the person that you're in a relationship with, where is that relationship going to go? Nowhere. Hallelujah. Where is it going to go? Oh. And if you don't know who you in a relationship, is that relationship going to grow? Is that relationship going to influence you? Is that relationship going to have an effect on who you are? Mm -hmm. I doubt it there, sister. Thank you, too. One thing about this relationship, the ultimate relationship, if you get to know God, huh. 
If you read his word, yeah. you are going to find out some things about your God. Uh -huh. See, you, you, you're going to find out there's nothing too hard for God. Yeah. That's what the scripture does. See, 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 all those other friends, all those other relationships, there's a limit. There's a cap on what they can do for you. Because see, now when you get to this ultimate relationship, all of a sudden the ceiling is blown off. There is no cap. Okay. <laughs> I 
and she's going to blame it on me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so she may not even have to give you keys. I don't even know. Uh, but I know that when I heard him say that, I begin to think the relationship we have yes. outside of God mm -hmm. are so conditional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. That's right. I see. I see. They're so conditional. All right. All right. You know what it is? Because Tell the love that's involved in those relationships is also conditional. Hmm. Yes. Conditional love brings about conditional relationships. Therefore, your actions are predicated on how they behave and how they communicate. But when you read the scriptures to learn who God is, there's something you learn in the scriptures. He is not a respecter of people. So what he does for one, he'll do for another. And you learn about there's a love that he has that we are not familiar with if you don't know him. And that love is called happy love. Yeah. So in the scriptures, he said he loved you even when you was in your mother's womb. Yes, he did. So that love began before you got here. Yes, it did. All those other relationships that we're not going to talk about, a lot of those relationships and a lot of that love mm -hmm. is all predicated on what has happened to that individual. Their life experiences, unfortunately, flows over into their relationships, and it hits that emotional button, and it has a tendency to dictate how they behave. Mm -hmm. And so, that's not good, because in that becomes a habit. So then, when you become saved. That habit of how you treat and behave in relationships, you carry over into a relationship with God, huh. and that's not acceptable. No. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's not acceptable because God is not like man. Come on. Yes. God is spirit. So you, when you read the scriptures to become familiar with who God is, it'll tell you in the scriptures over in Romans 12 and 2. Be not conformed to this world, yes. but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So in this relationship, I gotta renew my mind. Yeah, I gotta renew my mind. When God was ministering to me, he said something to me. He says, he says, he says, brother, this relationship that you're gonna talk about. He said, many, many, many people confess what they have. He said, many, many, many people actually believe in their heart. Mm -hmm. But he said, here's the problem with that. He said that the heart they're believing in me with is the heart that Jeremiah talks about in 1789. Oh. Hey, hello, hello, somebody go to work. Oh. And who do you know? See, that heart. It's not the heart that God is living. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you go over to Psalm 51, uh, verse 10, this is the heart he's living for. Mm -hmm. This is the Psalm 51, David, that was repenting to God. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh God, mm -hmm. create me a clean heart. A clean heart. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Come on now. You know the right spirit. Oh God. That's and it. you knew a right spirit Everything. in me. Yes. You know what that's called? That's called born again. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> born again. You see, that's good. You, you get into this relationship, there's some things you gotta do. Okay? There's some things that are required. Now you say and you say, I'm going to assume that you have been baptized in water. I'm also going to assume that you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because these two things you need. To navigate through this relationship. Because God is going to speak to you when you read his word and you get to know him. He's going to speak to you. But if the Holy Spirit does not rest, rule, and abide inside of you, it's going to be difficult for God to function you, for God to order your steps, and for God to speak to you and through you. See, he's not just going to speak to you. He's going to speak to you and through you. Because you know why? When we get to that second point, I'll tell you why. This is 
like no other relationship. You can't treat this relationship like your other relationship. So in other words, you cannot be in the mood to not want to talk to God. Come on, man. Come on. This is the same God that saved you. The same God that delivered your children. The same God that has mercy on you. The same God that when you repent and forgave you. The same God that so loved the world. He said this only begotten.
Proverbs 3 and 5. As in, we got to quote it all the time. Trust the Lord in our heart and lean not to your own understanding. How more simple can that be? That's one of the easy scriptures I've seen. You don't have to go get no big old thick distortions from the dictionary. No, you don't. But I think this scripture is so simple to understand, yet it's disobeyed every day. Yeah. Yeah. Because even without you asking, people in those other relationships will solicit their opinion any given time they feel like it. Say it again, All day long. All day long. And all night too. <laughs> if you answer the phone. <laughs> I don't even want a lot of people to think. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I get it anyway. And it is a gift. Don't do it. They have given you their opinion, and then if you don't take it, <laughs> no one can tell you that.
Not like the boogeyman. 
I said, Lord, take the teeth out of my mouth. Okay? Now, one more. This is what we're going to spend a little time on. Number three. The benefits of this relationship. Yes. <laughs> you Talk see. About it. Talk about it. You know, Pastor, you just celebrated your 43rd anniversary. You're the pastor of Lady Tia. And for 43 years. Get that 
Kira, era Africa. Then he said, the next day, a couple days later, he said, he went to his car and called us. So he had to get a package. He went out. I immediately felt in my spirit, Pastor, this brother don't know him. <laughs> I just picked it up in my spirit. And then he went on again. And I said, oh, Lord, I got to work on this truck, guy. I got to get out of here.
God will love you like no other person on earth. God will forgive you because he has the ability and the authority to forgive you and cleanse you. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that saved us. That's the God that sent this only begotten Son. That's who God is. Why wouldn't I fall in love with someone that loves me no matter what? Why wouldn't I fall in love with someone that can open a door and man shut? God can heal me better than any doctor on this earth. If I have the faith that he can do it, I stand before you this morning right now. I have a chair in my presence. I have all the hands that blew on my knee, and I'm moving through the wind because of God. Because I'm on a sign. Now, I may walk out of the church and fall back, but right now, I'm still alive. Amen. That's right. Because I'm on a sign for God, and I believe him. I trust him. I love him. Most people who know me hear me say this all the time. I love the Lord. Yes, thank you. I love him the way he loves me. And I love him because no matter what I do, he still loves me. My dear sister, my little sister from another mother. Yeah. Love her dearly. Boy, but I, this might be something to a husband. I don't know how much she's going to love me. <laughs> I don't know. Right. I don't know what I was. I don't know. Right. Yeah. But I know that I can ask her for her forgiveness. I believe she'll forgive me. I believe Brother Carl will forgive me. I know God will forgive me. Okay. Not only will he forgive you, he's going to forget about it. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's another benefit of this relationship. See, God is going to bring bread back up. God is going to beat you over the head with what you did last week, last year, last month. I 
can we give it away? Yeah. I said, Lord, I need you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get there if it, it's not for you. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, I got like, five minutes to spend. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't yeah. do it.
God said, we need to deal with you. And if you practice his principles, and you take the word off the pages and apply it to your life, and let those words come alive, you're going to see how God can turn your life completely around. God can take you from being a sinner to a believer. From a believer to a servant. But you can't do it without. And you can't do it without knowing his word. You can't do it without making a commitment. He made a commitment to us by sending his son, Jesus Christ. That was his commitment to us. That was him showing him us how much he loved us. You say you love him. Now let's show how much we love him. Let's be obedient. Let's walk in his likeness. Let's be obedient to his word. Let's draw all men to us by the light that shines within us, which is called the Spirit of Jesus Christ. That's how we draw people to us. Amen. I'll turn you over to guys.
ultimate relationship. Amen. I think that's one of my favorite messages. I've heard you. You've spoken several times. You've spoken several times here at Day Spring. But somehow that one just kind of, yeah, it just kind of, you know, pops out at it. It kind of shines a little brighter. Amen. I thank God for that. So only God knows what's to come. Amen. 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 At this time, we want to participate in another part of the service, which is worship as well. It is time to give. Amen. Amen. It is time to give. Bless the name of the Lord. We thank God for our day spring members and our day spring partners who give so liberally into the ministry so that we're able to do what we do and we are able to uh, increase the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. If you would like to get an envelope from Brother Jacob, he's to my right here. You may raise your hand and he can get an envelope to you if you'd like to give by way of envelope. Or you may want to give by cash app, and that is one day spring, one day spring. Of course, the dollar sign is one day spring if you'd like to give by way of cash app. If you want to give by mail, you may send it to Day Spring Ministries, P.O. Box 432. Menifee, California, 92538, 92538. If you want to go online, you can go online to dayspringm.org and click the Give tab and follow the prompts. If you text the give, text GIVE100 to 951-365-5383. That's 951-365-5383 to get started. Amen? Amen. And while you're preparing your offering, let us have a word of prayer. Let us pray over our tithe and offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for allowing us to be in a position where we have something to give. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that we are bringing our tithe and our offering into the household of faith, Father God, so that the business of the kingdom can be carried out in the name of Jesus. We ask that you bless the gift and bless the giver. Bless the giver tenfold, God. In the name of Jesus, bless them mightily. Bless their going in and their coming out. Lord, we thank you right now. In Jesus' mighty master's name we pray. And let the church say, Amen. 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 Praise God. So did you enjoy the service on today? Amen. amen. That was good. We got a full word and we take all day. We, the Lord blessed us in this house and we can go home and Go over to our friend's house and tell somebody about this great word on today. Amen? Amen. We can share the love of God. Amen. We just, again, thank you for making Day Spring your place of worship on today. And please come back and tell somebody about Day Spring. Come back and worship with us. At this time, yeah, is everyone okay? Is everyone giving? Is everyone? All right. Praise God. Uh, Brother Jacob. There's a few more people. Amen. At this time, Pastor Bill, do you want to come and dismiss? Okay, we're happy to dismiss. Amen, amen. I really want the, the uh, man of God to come. He uh, brought such a profound word. I think that anointing that lies in him right now, if you just come and dismiss us, just sprinkle a little bit more of it on us. Amen? Amen. God bless you, brother. Do you may stand to your feet as he dismisses us. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you as always simply for this being God. Lord, we thank you for the word that you minister to, not just to me, but to your people through me, through the Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that we will receive this word. Open up our hearts, Lord, and allow us to meditate on this word and to go forth in obedience and walk in faith. Lord, we want to thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that you saw fit that we needed a Savior, that you sent your only begotten Son. And Lord, because of your Son, we now have salvation. We have something to look forward through to as we pass through, as we sojourn through this world. On our way to you, Lord. We thank you. We give you the highest praise. We say hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, as we leave this place, but not your presence, I pray for travel and mercy. I pray, Lord, you continue to have mercy and grace on this dark world. I pray that the people that don't know you may one day come into a relationship with your son, Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord, that they will give you 
all the glory, all the honor, in Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen.